And the head of the communications system, it wasn't called the FCC, was an amateur license. And he called up some of the gurus and said, what can we do to get a better signal? They receive Tokyo Rose on Hawaii. And they ended up with a beverage antenna that was like three miles long. 15,000 feet long. The pathway is still cut there through the woods and the vegetation and the receiver shack. And they could hear Tokyo Rose wonderful every day. They made recordings of her every day and they put the recordings on a B-17 and flew them back to Washington, D.C. to listen. But it was that long three-mile beverage antenna that that Tokyo Rose's signal would start to build up on and build up into multiple, multiple wavelengths as it came back to receive shacks. So that was quite a directional antenna. Roger, you think that was better than a rhombic? Yeah, because they had the physical wavelength, you know, and closer to the ground made it a little bit quieter. And the beverage antennas that uh, uh, some of the big 160-meter boys run them at a very low level and they, once you get out there several thousands of feet why uh, you hear things I was talking to a guy here on 40 I've got a power line that's going to be discontinued here I can, a couple thousand feet I can play with but he said uh, he had the same thing on his farm and they left some of the wire there and he can hear things now down to 200 kcs and the amateur bands in the VLF band he could never hear he said just that huge antenna and signals will start to build on it and I, I'm, I can hear signals down there very well that I couldn't even begin to think about hearing on my 80 meter antenna just because it was such a multi-wavelength multi-wavelength antenna in length that uh, they, you could hear on this you know it, it, it works both ways the transmit signal will start to build as the electrons are being pushed off and even on the receive side they'll start to build and get stronger and stronger Roger, you know, uh, those long wire antennas uh, have a tendency to uh, pick up uh, voltage. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, some pretty considerable voltage that you can get actually get a arc to ground from the just the wire that picking up uh, stray voltage. Well, I can be sitting here and know there's thunderstorms in the area. And I'll hear a snap here across the capacitor plates. And then I hear a boom. Does he know oh, that we're distance, partners? Uh, and that could be a thunderstorm, big static discharge, four and five miles away. Hey, That's Bob. why I have complete disconnects here. I get all kinds of atmospheric noises on an antenna 330 foot long compared to a doublet. Bob? Yes? I just want to warn you, that is my partner in crime. We have robbed many banks together. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, sir. This is a 9GTO making a disclaimer. Okay. Do you know Lou? Uh, yes, I do. I know Lou. Hell, I've known the man all my life. Go well, ahead, Lou, I've known each other for a few years. And, and boy, you got all kinds of character friends. Hello. No, it's sounding pretty good, Kevin. Oh, cow. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Frank, he had an old man, uh, old man, I can't, he had a, uh, better shut up. Yeah, you better shut up. Go ahead, Lou. We've been sitting here talking to antennas, I think, Jim. Yeah, I think he has, uh, disappeared or elsewhere, uh, detained. <laughs> Maybe legally detained, I'm not sure. Yeah, Lou, something else. Yeah, I think it would have been neat uh, to have uh, been uh, in the radio, say, in World War I or, or, or well, two, yeah, but the beginning of uh, radio in warfare, I think, is really interesting as far as, you know, what they could do with, you know, learning about uh, signals and stuff. Well, yeah, amateur community contributed a lot of help to them, you know. I mean, we basically had no big trained military all about communications and 
all the knowledge that the ham radio operators had, just like the, the one guy head of the so-called FCC called up all the ham radio gurus and said, hey, we've got to come up with a better receive system. What's the idea? And they all went out there and went to work and bingo. It was Tokyo Rose. They had her coming through a matter of a week. Each person, you know, wouldn't have known what to do. Roger that. Thing was, man, those uh, military receivers, boy, they were, you know, 50 pounds or so. Well, that's why they called them boat anchors. Didn't have any transistors back then. Roger, Roger. But they, they certainly were... Uh, you know, well, they would have some problems on the higher frequencies from uh, the standpoint of stability and all that, but uh, as far as sensitivity, man, those are beautiful radios. That's true. And it's going back to old tune circuits. It's not this broadbanded stuff that we have in the, uh, our Kenwoods here. It's the old tune circuit tuned to a resonant frequency, both RFs, you know, and even the IFs, and uh, that was part of the... Uh, sensitivity of things that we had in the uh, the old tube radios we don't have in the modern solid state stuff. We got wonderful filtering systems and crisp, you know, filtering and bandwidth situations uh, in these radios that we that we didn't have in the old uh, boat anchors. Roger, well, I remember as a kid, uh, I had, uh, I think, a, like a 7-band or a 10-band uh, shortwave radio. Uh, I forget what it, which manufacturer, but each of those uh, bands had uh, two or three uh, adjustments, you know, and uh, I uh, remember saying, well, I'm going to I'm gonna tune this thing up. <laughs> oh, boy, I'd get to about the third band and make some critical mistakes as far as what I was doing. Well, I have, I still have boat anchor receivers. You know, I operate some of them, and I've taken two of them, and I've just tuned them strictly for like maybe one part of the 75 meter band or the high end of the 40 meter band to make them as sharp as I can on sensitivity and selectivity and if I tune across the whole band they start going dead. I don't have them tuned for a wide 5 megacycle, 4 megacycle frequency range. I've tuned them down just to be a sharp one, uh, you know, 150, 150 kilocycle range. You can tell the difference in the performance of them. Roger. Now, was that a, a triple conversion receiver? No, they don't. I have double conversions. I do have one column that's got triple conversion. I leave it uh, one megacycle tuned range. Hello. Hello. Good evening. That will straight, Bob. Yeah, this is my my most five quid on me. Oh, has it come back? It just took out 200 watts on CW, but it took out like a quarter of that on 5 main. There's something happened there, and we'll see it off here in a month or so. Well, that's no good. I don't care if that's CW. So that tells me the PA is still good, eh? Yeah. Take too long to say something on CW. Yeah, I mean, now, what is that, a Yezu or ICOM or what? at the Mark 5. Yeah, it's in 1000 NP Mark 5 Okay, I'm with you. I've never had this. Oh, it's, it's an older radio, so it's bound to have something sometime go wrong. True, like us old people. You may hurt Steve. Yeah, he was in and out earlier. He's been fighting high water and whatnot. Now, wait a minute. He's at the top of a hill. Back way home because he had to, uh, they shut down part of the highway here. Are you close, are you close to him or what? He's in next county below me. Okay, yeah, he's been telling us about the water problems over there. Uh, start talking about 11 o'clock, I think. What kind of water problems he having? I thought he was at the top of a hill. Well, remember, he tried to get down to the bottom of the hill, and that's where the water is. Oh, he's trying to get out. Yeah, you know, his wife's trying to get home from work. 
Yeah, he may be batching it for a while. And he said they had a few mudslides over there, too. How many inches total did you get overall? I don't know. I've never checked. I know Eastern Ohio, they had up to three inches in some places. It's just during the last day and a half. Does this radio sound okay, though? Yeah, it sounds good. I'm just checking. I'm just talking here to see if my foot yards would be. Well, he works and communicates, and that's what we're all after. Yeah, I've got a big team line made now uh, for my amplifier for this thing. This case, you know, VKB, uh, Bob, is, is it Bob there? Is that your name? And, uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm the devil is Jay. Roger, Roger. We're going to take a standby here for short, but uh, good to talk to you, sir, and uh, we'll say threes up that way. It's Casey 9 dkv Okay, now we enjoy our conversation with you and have fun with the antennas and whatnot. Have fun with antennas? Hell, he's got 10,000 antennas, Bob. Or maybe he'll loan you one. Well, one of these days he's going to help me uh, get all straightened out over here. He keeps promising. Hey, tell him who got him. Hey, stop that, old man. Yeah. Call on me, Bob. Well, you're doing a pretty good job. You're turning over, Lou. Band's not the greatest. Yeah, but uh, old Timmy's running the tutu where I built for him. Okay. <laughs> what kind of signal are you getting on Jimmy? He's about the same, turn over. Ah, Jimmy, Jimmy, crank that thing up a little bit, Jimmy. Let, 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 let's, uh, let's have a shootout to tell, tell Copy Ohio. Well, I can't do that, man. My my antenna's in in disrepair. I'm I'm uh, 20 feet off the ground. I I lost my uh, I lost my lease on the top limb, Roger. Oh, that's it. There we go. All right, we're about the same. No, I'm only putting out 500 watts, Bob, on the W4 meter. The Drake W4 meter says about 500 watts. That's with a 100 watt drive in the tube. Is putting out about 400, so that's 500, because uh, a 3 500D is passive, so your input is definitely added to the output. So, 500 watts on the uh, W4, uh, yeah, W4 meter. Well, Lou, you're running a total average, a consistent average, 15, 16 over, and when you had an orgasm and start screaming, hello, 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 you have 20, and he's running it right with you, 15 over. <laughs> Hey, Bob, orgasm, boy, that's a good one. I'm glad those days, you know, it's something. I'm 50, I'm 55, Bob. And I, I, I want to tell you, this is a story, true story. Probably one of the greatest days of my life is um, not having that, that rooster in me anymore. I just don't give a damn. I mean, yeah, everything is great. I just don't give a damn. And the wife, uh, she's chasing me around. I'm going, hold, slow it up here. You know, but I, I'm glad that all that's over with and behind me. In your neighborhood doesn't have to worry anymore. Now, be careful if she doesn't slip some brighter in your food. Oh, I, yeah. Well, then I would definitely know that. But, uh, yeah, when the wind blow, when the wind would blow, uh, Bob, I had issues when I was younger. And, whew, boy, I tell you. But she was a good girl. She she knew she knew how to take care of business, and she knew that uh, instead of, uh, uh, well, let's see here, what's that one stuff called? Uh, Paxil? Uh, Prozac and lithium. She knew that just a little, a, a good shower at night and a little loving before you go to bed goes a long way, Bob. I had friends here with, you know, we got the VA hospital and a couple of my new real wild doctors. And, well, what's new today? What's crazy things have happened? Said, well, we had a guy come in here this afternoon. We don't know what he's taken, but for six hours. It's been up there. No way we can get it down. Tried to ice and everything. And some of the other doctors are saying, hey, tell us what you took. Tell us what you took. I need something like that for my wife. Oh, no. No, no, no. Uh, uh, hi, uh, Jimmy, I don't want to leave you out of conversation. And by the way, uh, and I'm not joking, uh, uh, Bob, 
Jim is married to 1976 Miss America. Uh, thereabouts. Yeah, somewhere around 74 to 78, she's Miss America. So he's one lust, lucky SOB. Yeah, well, that sounds good. Well, of course, I've had a good, I've had a good Miss America for 53 years. Well, she's not really Miss America, but she is to me. Well, it's snowing here, but good story. I always enjoy stories. Coffee shop I'd stop at a lot of times in the morning. Characters come in. He just he'd get on stuff like this. He was living with some babe and had a daughter about 16 years old. Was wild. They weren't. He wasn't married to a woman. But anyway, I guess this girl had really been playing around in the town, and she ended up getting chlamydia. You know that disease women carry. And some uh, young boy came to the uh, house door one day, and I wanted to know if Steph was there. Anyway, Joe, if Joe answered the door, and Steph's mother was there, and well, no, she isn't. Why? I said, well, I've, I've got some swelling uh, in my uh, body. Oh, you, Joe said, oh, you've been having sex with her. Well, well, you know. Joe said, hey, open up your mouth and stick your tongue out. Well, go ahead, stick your tongue out. I want to see it if it's all swollen up, and the, the damn dumb kid did it. And Joe said, well, at least you're safe. You kept your mouth out of it. <laughs> But anyway, everybody got joking about Joe. So, Joe, you know, you're living in that house and stuff. You, you know, where you'd sit and this and that. You might track that damn stuff in here. And he said, yeah, I could have had. Well, anyway, Joe got up and left somewhere. And the one waitress, she was in Texas. She was a lot of fun. She went over and sat down over that seat. And she was laughing all about it. I said, don't you realize Joe was sitting there and you might end up getting the same thing? Oh, my God. <laughs> she jumped off the seat right now. Oh, back in the 80s, uh, Bob, that was some serious stuff, man. You know, the epidemic of AIDS and everything else. and I mean, it, it was pretty crazy. Well, I got another good one for you. brought it up, and it didn't make the headlines across the country. About three, four years ago, this one uh, private college up in South Dakota. It was not totally a Christian school, but it had Christian youth roots. And anyway, uh, they had a basketball team, and they'd recruited some freshmen out of Chicago. Uh, he wasn't pure American, let's just put it that way, on the basketball team. Of course, all the young girls, you know, boy, here's this college jock and this and that. You'll find they've got the same sexual emotions and desires that other people do. And I don't know how many girls he took care of up there in the first month. And it came out he had AIDS. He was carrying AIDS. He was AIDS afflicted. And they just finally put a bulletin out to all, all women who have had sex with this guy. We'll keep your name private, <coughs> but come in for a medical evaluation. And man, here comes a bunch of girls in panic stricken that they had had sex with this guy and wanted to, you know, have the high school jock. But it ended up the rest of the story, they were kind of prolific to begin with, and they'd been having some sex with even some of the local boys in the college up there. And now this number 10 started to develop into the number 20 and 30, including other males they had. And it, it became a crisis on that campus and even in the community itself, you know, this good Christian school. And now we've got maybe 20, 30 kids that might be a reflected with AIDS because this carrier of AIDS came up and played basketball and has got the damn, you know, the, the college, basically the people, the college infected with AIDS. Yeah, anyway, I don't know how it washed out, but there was quite a bit of panic in the college for a while and the student body also. Well, I do know the story of a kid I went to school with. I always thought that he was different, you know, and, and and to me, Bob, there's nothing, you know, gay people are gay, people. they're born that way to me. I, I don't think anybody wait one wake up one morning and say, you know, I'm going to be a gay guy today, because I don't think anybody would wish the, the tormenting, the heart, you know, everything. But uh, there was a guy I went to school with, uh, he was a hell of a basketball player. I mean, he could he could bat a ball like crazy, and uh, but uh, he, contract, he went to the uh, Navy and contracted AIDS, came home. And, uh, you know, uh, survived the virus. They, they got treatment for it, and, he, and I, yeah, he still had to take it. But he still goes to the high school reunions uh, when he graduated. And, and, and he, uh, uh, I, someone told me that he gets $3,750 a month for the rest of his life 
and it, back then it was only 1500 but you know you get the cost of living increase and that happened in the 80s you know he went in in 80 what was it 80 something 86 87 86 and and then uh, got out in uh, 92 and then after that uh, you know uh, got full disability and, and and by the way he's an architect and he still makes a nice living at that, too. And I was sitting there thinking, wasn't there a conflict of interest? And they said, no, no, he contracted it while he was in the military. Therefore, they have obligated to pay. Well, I never heard that one. Wouldn't surprise me. But I did read another one here six months ago. Florida and the sexual transmitted disease problem in Florida. And it isn't all among the youth or the minorities. It's up there in the retiree population as well of... 50 and 60 and 65 year old retirees. I've had people tell me they, you know, one one local guy, his wife had passed away, married 50 years, and one of his buddies, you know, oh, come on down to Florida. He came back a month later. He said, my God, he said, well, I'm glad to get out of that place. Everywhere I would go, oh, you're you're a widower. Uh, I've been looking for someone to live with me, and come on, I got clothes, I got everything. And he said. I'm glad to be back home to be away from some of those sex maniacs, but that was part of the problem of, on the transmittal diseases of some of the senior citizen sex maniacs that were helped spreading it around. Did you ever hear that one or read that one, Lou? No, I didn't, but I, I had an uncle that was in a nursing home that uh, made the invasion of Normandy as well as my father, as my uncle on my mother's side, and... Uh, uh, he was uh, considered a, a a gigolo in the nursing home. He lived there, and uh, he had got he had got to clap or something from a eighty year old woman. Oh, we used to have home satellite. Had the Playboy Channel. The Playboy Channel did not show hard rated uh, X stuff on uh, TV. It was unscrambled. But they had one on there one time about the senior citizen houses of prostitution in New York City. And here you had these older prostitutes, 70, 80 years old, and you had these old guys who still wanted to have some sex life. They actually had some houses of prostitution that were ran by 60, 70-year-old women. And John Doe, 85, 90 years old, he always knew where he could go to get sexually satisfied. So senior citizen house of prostitution. Think about that one. You guys, i got to jump out of here. I'll say uh, threes to everybody. Uh, and like I said, we were, we're rolling tape. I think the tape is melted by now. But uh, with any luck, we'll uh, post it up on YouTube uh, in the next few days. If you do a call letter search of Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor, that would bring up the QSO Vlog page. And this should be at the top uh, uh, with about 170 uh, QSOs. And uh, under uh, Art Bell, and incidentally, Art Bell died about three days ago. I read that. Well, uh, me and Bob Blue, we we don't know how to use computers, Jeff. So uh, uh, somebody will enjoy it. But you've always promised to teach me how to use a computer. So well, one of these days, I'll learn how to use that computer. Well, <laughs> I just got one of them back. Uh, then the problem was, uh, I mean, it played uh, all of the. Uh, Internet stuff fine, but when I went to play a local video, you know, just a regular video, I had a green screen, and uh, so I had to live with a green screen over the weekend. And just uh, today, uh, I got a hold of the guy, and he uh, led me through. Uh, man, we went through some doors and places I've never been before. But finally, uh, I'm I'm seeing the right video now instead of a green screen. Good deal. All right, Jimmy, have a good one. We'll chat with Bob for a minute, and then uh, the phone should be ringing here in a second, and that'll be the wife. <laughs> 